Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Good news, everyone. Today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my new book, Tits and Art. Tits and Art, or TNA, is my new annual project. It's a big 11 by 17 full color book busting out with beautiful women and beautiful art. Signups are live now. It's only live for 30 days, so I can guarantee delivery by Christmas. Sign up today. Link in the description below. The following is a world class bullshitters exclusive. Star Wars is one of the most beloved films in history. From it spawned a universe full of stories, characters, and myths that resonated with audiences for decades. Star Wars grew into a massive juggernaut under one man, George Lucas. In 2012, George Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney, and the results have been hit and miss. Fans have been divided since the beginning, but the press always erred on the side of Disney, claiming fans needed to see the whole saga, or fans are just angry over the removal of the EU, or fans hate progress. The answers were maddening, as they always found a way to spin the failure into the favor of Star Wars. Solo? Abject failure. The press? They blamed films led by white men as the problem, and came up with a series of outside factors as to why it was everyone's fault except Lucasfilms. Now that everything has slowed to a halt theatrically, people in the industry are beginning to point fingers at those in charge, and it's satisfying to say the least. Let's crack into this bad boy, but before we do... Check out my new book, Tits and Art. It's a big 11x17, 32-page full-color book featuring beautiful women, and it's fully uncensored. It's available now until October 22nd because we want to guarantee delivery by Christmas. We've already crossed our funding goal, and we're getting ready to pass our first big tier. So folks, go over to titsandart.com, check out the book, get yourselves a copy, and get involved with the most fun you'll have this year. A Hollywood insider explains how Disney mismanaged Star Wars despite the success of the franchise's streaming series. George Lucas changed pop culture forever in 1977 with the release of Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope and began one of the largest media franchises of all time. Side note, when it was released it was just called Star Wars. It wasn't the fourth episode, just saying. Star Wars remained under Lucas's leadership until 2012 when the visionary filmmaker sold his production company Lucasfilm to the Walt Disney Company. Chosen by Lucas, Indiana Jones producer Kathleen Kennedy now leads the Star Wars franchise as the president of Lucasfilm, beginning a new era of Star Wars. Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm brought several changes to the Star Wars universe, which received mixed responses from fans of the franchise. Disney's plans included a Star Wars sequel trilogy that began with Episode 7, The Force Awakens, in 2015, and would complete the Skywalker saga. The franchise also began the Star Wars Story Anthology film series, which consists of 2016's Rogue One and the 2018's Solo, A Star Wars Story, and released several streaming series on Disney+, such as the critically acclaimed The Mandalorian. While the success seen from The Mandalorian led Disney to pursue a full slate of live-action Star Wars shows that include the recently released Rogue One prequel Andor and the upcoming Ahsoka, the production of Star Wars films is all but halted. Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron was just removed from the Disney release schedule, and Taika Waititi's untitled film has yet to report any progress. The move away from Star Wars movies has led some to question the franchise's direction and Kennedy's leadership. Now, reporter and Hollywood insider Matthew Belloni explains the main problem Star Wars currently faces. In a recent episode of his podcast, The Town, Current Direction Under Disney, it gives a complete breakdown of how he believes Kennedy has mismanaged the franchise, specifically looking at its film's releases. Even though Andor apparently is good, this new Star Wars series that Tony Gilroy did, so keep that in mind. But I believe the management of the Star Wars franchise has been abysmal since Disney took over Lucasfilm. Thank you for saying that. And mostly on the film side. If you go back now, in retrospect, and look at how they handled this franchise, it's awful. I mean, the fact that they rushed to get The Force Awakens into theaters, just first it was supposed to come out in summer of 2015. Then they finally acknowledged that, oh, we're not going to make that, but they didn't want to delay it. They only put it to December of 2015, so they had to rush to finish that one. They had no idea what the next episode would be when they made The Force Awakens. That, I am told, was J.J. Abrams' decision. Basically saying, let's just make this one good and then we'll figure out the rest. Then they let Ryan Johnson do his episode, and he made a bunch of changes to the franchise that they didn't know how to deal with on the third of that trilogy. J.J. Abrams basically pulled the Emperor out of his ass. They were like, oh, a big bad guy is going to be the Emperor, even though he wasn't even in the previous two movies. So the management there has been awful, and they have basically put pause on the movies. Kathleen Kennedy has hired director after director to try to figure out what these stories are going to be. She hasn't had any plans that's worth greenlighting. The Rogue Squadron movie that Patty Jenkins was going to direct was just officially taken off the calendar for next December, even though everyone in Hollywood knew that wasn't happening, because they couldn't even come up with a storyline they wanted to do, and that despite having a big announcement where Patty Jenkins got up in an investor day for Disney and talked about how great her Star Wars movie was going to be, that they didn't know what it was going to be yet. It was just a big PR mistake to do that, so I just think the focus on streaming over the last... They got very lucky that Favreau made The Mandalorian what it was. 
And all the other shows have sort of come in that vein, and they're fine. But Star Wars is no longer special. The movies are dormant, and that is a big problem. I strongly believe they need a change at Lucasfilm. Well, no shit, man. We've been saying this for years. Look, if you brought this up any time before this guy, you were a sexist, misogynistic dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War, a racist bastard, uh, Russian bot piece of shit. Lying, no good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake-licking, dirt-eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood-sucking, dog-kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat-ass, bug-eyed, stiff-legged, spotty lip Fanboy, toxic, asshole, douchebag. Stupid worthless, no good, goddamn, freeloading, son of a bitch, retarded, big mouth, know-it-all, asshole, jerk, worm-headed sack of monkey shit, ugly, lazy, and disrespectful, shut up, bitch! Um, you name, a, name a name, you were fucking called that for calling Kathleen Kennedy out on her bullshit, but you know what? Hey, I don't care about the past, I care about the future, and hopefully the future doesn't include Kathleen Kennedy. But then again, should I actually care? But in reality, this is so refreshing. And you can go back and check out this channel. We've been saying the same thing for years. We'll go back to The Force Awakens and say, this is just a rehash of the original Star Wars. What are they going to do? You can even track all of the rehashes in each of the sequel trilogy films. The Force Awakens has a lot of copies from A New Hope. Hey, The Last Jedi, there's a lot of similarities to The Empire Strikes Back, including walkers and speeders, to the point where the guy touches the ground and goes, it's salt. Well, you want it to look like Hoth, but you don't want it to be Hoth. So what's white and a substance that you could put on the ground? Cocaine. Yes, it's a planet made of cocaine, folks. Now, that would have been a brilliant idea. Well, the cocaine was behind the scenes, but I digress. And it's been fun speculating, hypothesizing on when she's going to go, because she's got to go. It's never been, well, maybe Kathleen Kennedy will get better. It's like, hey, I'm Kathleen Kennedy. Welcome to Jackass, where she puts her foot in her mouth every single week. It would be sad if she didn't suck so much, and I don't really care because I don't know her personally, but she is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars since, well, ever. Honestly, you can say Jar Jar Binks, you can say Ewoks, you can say all of these other things in Star Wars, but the most damaging thing to Star Wars wasn't the Empire, wasn't Darth Vader, wasn't the Emperor himself. No, it was the secretary for Raiders of the Lost Ark. And if you think that's a joke, just look up the credits. She gets a special credit to Mr. Spielberg. Man, I wish I could deliver coffee that well and get a job making my favorite movies. Well, Star Wars aren't her favorite movies. This is just a job for her. Now, you don't need to have, I don't know, me making these decisions, though. Believe me, if I was, you'd be a lot happier. But you need somebody that at least is competent in filmmaking and knows what's up with the Star Wars universe. Yeah, that's Jon Favreau, but to act like everything the guy's touched has been solid gold would be a lie and be disingenuous. Seriously, how much of The Mandalorian do you consider truly great? That first season's solid, Parts of season two are great. Hell, the book of Boba Fett feels more like Mandalorian in certain parts than the season two of The Mandalorian did. So I bring that to your attention because I don't think there's a name out there in the conversation that's right for Star Wars yet. And it definitely isn't Dave Filoni. Come on, Ahsoka Tano should have died how long ago? The character is being milked. That's all it is now. We're just milking recognizable things for no reason. Star Wars has found a way to take everything recognizable and ruin it. You went from Obi-Wan Kenobi being a legendary Jedi to being some douchebag who, what does he, make meat on a on Tatooine and kind of watch over Luke Skywalker? Nothing about Obi-Wan made me like the character or the world of Star Wars more. And the same with a lot of these other shows. I'd like to know how you guys feel, so tell me down in the comments about your opinions of these Star Wars shows. Star Wars has been much more successful on Disney Plus than the theatrical films for so many reasons. Quality being the main one. But I think cashing in on nostalgia was the key to the demise of Star Wars because it needed to cash in on the past, but it chose to use it as a way to prop up the new, filled with new ideals of creative and management. I think it's too late for Star Wars to cash in on the past. The last seven years have been terrible because fans had the new alternative shoved down their throat as the classic lie they're dying. Poe Dameron and Finn were not replacements for Han Solo. Rey was not Luke Skywalker. She shouldn't have had the name either. Well, she wasn't really a Skywalker. Han, Luke, and Leia, they never shared a moment on screen together in The Force Awakens. Why? They wanted to keep fans guessing with a mystery box and tearjerker trailers, but ultimately delivered nothing. That's why Disney Star Wars lives on discount retail shelves across the nation. The future was in The Mandalorian, but based on what I've seen, Baby Yoda's cuteness only goes so far. That character is clogging shelves too. Everywhere. The kids are adults wanted their Baby Yoda dolls. The hype died down. It'll be interesting to see if The Mandalorian can maintain its baseline quality, or will it be more like the book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan? Cheap shows who fail to make a connection and only exist to sell merchandise. 
funnily enough, the merchandise isn't reaching the audience Lucasfilm wants. There was a failed crowdfunder for a Reva lightsaber. No one paid $500 for a lightsaber of a character even less people enjoyed. It's refreshing to see this talk of mismanagement, but isn't it too late? The fans aren't as supportive as they once were because they were called toxic man babies and all that jazz. Mismanagement isn't even a strong enough word to describe this situation. Betrayal may be too harsh, but fuck up is a good one. Disney fucked up Star Wars. I don't support Star Wars the way I used to. I don't have an interest in what they're selling. They don't even make much Han Solo stuff anymore. Hearing this isn't as gratifying as much as it is sad. The fans knew this whole time. We wanted a regime change at Lucasfilm for a long time. Now, it's too late. What could Star Wars do quickly to change course? Not very much. The upcoming Star Wars kids show is going to be Goonies in Space. Theatrically, Star Wars is probably dead. It would be nice to see a 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi re-release of the unaltered versions of the films. That could get people talking. Pushing forward with new characters is the right direction, but they have to be good. Reva was new, but not very good. The bad guy in Andor, he's new too, but he's just okay. The real trick of it all is waiting and seeing, but for some it's just too late to wait and see, and I don't blame anyone that is ready to abandon Star Wars, and I'm not surprised people are still supporting Star Wars. Sometimes it's hard to let an old friend go. I get that, believe me, I do. But it is refreshing to see someone in the media, in the press, in Hollywood, say this publicly. It's been bad for a long time, and, well, it's not over and done yet, because folks, just as Star Wars has pretty much been beaten to death, one more icon is coming back. The producer of Indiana Jones herself runs Lucasfilm. And I just wonder how bad it's going to be with her at the helm. I know she's not directing, James Mangold is, but let's take a second. An Indiana Jones film not directed by Steven Spielberg. That's, that's wrong to me. The guy... That's one of Indiana Jones' fathers, as weird as it sounds. He's got Lucas, and he's got Spielberg. And without those two guys, what is this? Lucas isn't around. Spielberg's not around. You got Harrison Ford. That's awesome. He's my favorite actor, but that's not enough. Oh, you got John Williams' music. That's not enough. Did you see that trailer? I did catch that leaked trailer. It ain't enough. And yeah, he looks young in that movie. Uh, Be prepared for that shit. So... I just am ready for the impending clusterfuck that is going to be Indiana Jones 5. Indiana Jones is my favorite fictional character right after James Bond. Anybody out there that knows me very well knows how much I got excited by the fourth Indiana Jones film. I went out, I bought all the merchandise, boxes of cereal, Pop-Tarts, ice cream bars, and saved a lot of the wrappers. Have a Raiders of the Lost Ark candy display from Mars Candy. Oh, I love that shit. I love Indiana Jones. And, well... I'm not going to be too worried about displaying any of my prized Indiana Jones collectibles in 2023 as I watch my favorite character. Well, you know what? It can't be as bad as the fourth one. Well, hold on. This is 2022 and anything is possible. But I will say this with absolute certainty. I saw him go in dry on Indiana Jones on that episode of South Park. And unless I see that in all its full CGI glory, that'll officially be the worst treatment of Indiana Jones ever put to film or television. But... I'll reserve judgment until I see Indiana Jones 5. So folks, what do you think about the mismanagement of Star Wars under Disney? It really is the story of bad management from Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm. I don't know if George Lucas was strong-armed, blackmailed, or, I don't know, had a lapse in judgment when he decided that Kathleen Kennedy would be the right choice for the job, but she wasn't. Honestly, what good things have come out of Star Wars? Let's just take another seven-year window, because I'm going to be fair. They hadn't released The Force Awakens until December 18th of 2015, but they've also owned Star Wars for about a decade now. So the first roughly three years weren't bad at all. What was it? You had, yes, you had the EU get canceled and you had some comic books, and that the EU getting canceled was terrible and catastrophic. The toy line, actually, you know what? The more I think about this, everything did decline. I don't know how early the licensing agreement would have taken into effect, but the first series of um, three and three quarter inch Five POA figures started coming out right after Disney took over, and those figures were really cheap-looking and poorly made and could probably be done very quickly, so I wonder if when it came time to renegotiate the fees, and we know for a fact how much the prices have gone up for the licensor Hasbro from Star Wars, um, yeah, God, yeah, it has been a decade of bullshit. But you know what? The point I was trying to make is, let's give George Lucas the same 10-year window. Let's go from the return of the prequels till 2009. In that window of time, George Lucas released Episode 1, 
2, and 3, as well as The Clone Wars, The Force Unleashed video game, a handful of great comic books, awesome toys, some of the best toys in the entire line, like that big Millennium Falcon from the Legacy Collection, all of that in a 10-year window. And the economy shit the bed and the world fell apart. All of these things. There was war, attacks, all of these big events. So I don't want anybody to say, well, Disney Star Wars had the disadvantage of a global blah, blah, blah. No, the fuck it didn't. Those movies shit the bed before anybody fucking sneezed. So don't give me that shit. In 10 years, they've taken the prime jewel of entertainment. And I mean all of entertainment, because how many actors out? James Cameron. They Say what you will about him. James Cameron's a filmmaker because of his love of Star Wars. How many people out there in the world were inspired by what they saw back in 1977? More than you can imagine. So many of today's artists were influenced by Star Wars and still are, even if today's artists were catching it in the special edition era or the prequel era. You know what? Star Wars was forever, like that old t-shirt said. But death is inevitable, even for Star Wars. I just never saw it coming so quickly. So folks, tell me what you think about all of this stuff, and here are your three questions for today. One, what is the worst Star Wars thing to come from Disney? Two, who is the shittiest Star Wars character from the Disney era? And three, what job do you think Kathleen Kennedy would be best suited for? Because the one she's got, she's not doing a good job. Thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Come back every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when we go live. And join us all throughout the month of October for Schlocktoberfest, where you'll have horror-themed content coming at you all the time. But in the meantime, folks, I'm going to go check in with my pal Hugh Jeffner. He's an artist extraordinaire who's uh, involved with this tits and art campaign. And uh, you'll be hearing from him very soon and seeing him next week. But in the meantime, folks, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other.